How you doing, bro? Bless, man. <laughs> the big old smile. I was like, I haven't seen you in a, a long time, man, but thanks very much for jumping on this podcast. You're officially like the second guest to go live with us. Technically the third, but something happened, but yeah, this is where we are. How are you doing? Like, everything's good? Everything's blessed. Love that, love that, love that. So on this episode of the podcast today, what I really want to get the people to understand is who is functional performance and also who is the person behind that, okay? Perfect. Love that. So I'm going to dive straight in. Like, who is Richard Francis? Like, what are you? Cool. <laughs> well, obviously, my name is Richard Francis. Um, I'm a husband. Love that. A business owner. Love that. Uh, and a dad. Love that. So h- how old is your, your child? Have you got one? Is it two? Yeah, just one child. Uh, Malachi is 10 months tomorrow. 10 months. Yeah. Love that. Man like Malachi. So is he still keeping you up at night or are you gone past that stage? Or not? Um... I mean, last night he did. <laughs> so I mean, majority of the time, uh, my wife Charlie okay. she deals with quite a lot of the, the bedtime stuff. And um, but it just depends. Sometimes you could sleep for like seven hours for the night, eight hours. Sometimes you'll he'll wake up every half an hour. Um, but it just depends on kind of like what stage of life he's in. So like, um, if, like when he was teething, for example, he had like four teeth coming through. Mad. He was up. So much. How many teeth has he got now? Six. Six? Yeah. yeah. So is he still teething then now? Um, but he's not at the stage where anything's coming through, so he's like yeah. stuck for a bit. So, but he had like four at the top all coming through together. So that, that was like, that imagine when, if you have like just two fake with one tooth. <laughs> had four, so. Man like America. So when did he start teething? Was it like, he's 10 months now, so um, when you, how old would you have been? So, like? I feel like even after like a couple of months, he was starting to get irritated gums. Mm-hmm. Um, and then his first two probably came through after about four months. Okay. Yeah. So it's four months now and Malachi is teething and you have worked a long hours, restless days at work. And all you can hear is, ah, are, you, are you getting out of bed or is Charlie getting out of bed? Are you thinking? <laughs> <laughs> well it's, it's weird because I'm, I'm quite like a deep sleeper yeah so um so unless kind of like it's repetitive or whatever yeah. but by the time that happens charlie's already got up and done what she needs to do but i mean when when he was first born um and i was off work we was both just doing whatever if we need to get off then we get off but because I'm at work and I have to get up early, yeah. or I get up early, um, unless it's the, where the point where he's getting up constantly, I end up just, Charlie just says, you know what, there's no point two of us being tired. Yeah, that's good. So, so you pretty much take it in turns. Yeah. Love that. So you're a father, you're a husband as well, but what's it like being a husband? So because we built quite a, a solid relationship, because um, we're both Christians, it kind of just, not not much has changed other than the fact that now we feel close to God. Love that. Um, and we're, we're doing things in ways that we probably didn't do before as, as such um, because obviously we're now more committed and we're like more one. Um, so, yeah. I love that. So I feel like we get to know, we've got to know, should I say, a lot about Richard the person. And you spoke about how you are a businessman as well. Like, I know what you're into so just let everyone know, what is functional performance like? What do you stand for? Well, functional performance, as you can tell by the name, yeah. it's you work on functional training and you're gonna get better at that by performing well. And it's essentially like a holistic approach to practical fitness and health through education, exercise and mentorship. Um, and what that essentially means, we talk about holistic, holistic, holistic just means whole approach. So instead of just focusing on one specific thing, like how do I get better at doing this specific exercise or movement? Yeah. We're going to look at, well, what does your day look like? What has your week been like? What has your month been like? And what's stopping you from being able to do X or being able to do Y through like an assessment? Okay. Um, what, what's involved in this? Like what do you put in this assessment? So... It's a multi-stage assessment. Um, Once the potential client has filled out some type of form and we've had like a discovery call, um, 
will essentially kind of discuss if I can even help them in the first place. Okay. If and and if they want to work with us, and if that box gets ticked, then we'll then move on to the um, just like the foundational assessment, where we essentially test their range of motion at different joints. So we we'll test like the wrist, the shoulders, the knees, the hips, and just seeing what their limitations are or how they move, um, like freely of any kind of. Um, equipment or anything involved. Once that assessment's done, um, we'll then run through a consultation and go through a process of how that was essentially gonna work and how the, how we're gonna get you from where you are now to where you actually wanna go in terms of your goals. I love that. I think in the fitness industry, there's not enough of that. Like it's very much like, like even before this podcast, like as I was walking out, someone called me for PT and I was like, look, like I want to talk to you, but I can't talk to you yet because you're not going to get everything from me. Yep. So the way that you have put everything with functional performance together and the brand and not just a 20 pound session, like it is a business. Like whenever I see this or I see you performing or you being on your stuff, I can very much see that you understand what you're doing which is a huge key thing and that you see the value and your clients see the value in you as an investment. Like it's not an expense, it's an investment. I think that's such a massive thing. A question that I have then, have you always been like this? No, definitely not. Definitely so so not. how many years have you been in, in fitness for? So before I answer that question, let me just yeah. go back a step and Sorry continue. That. That's what's yeah. fun. So once that kind of, um, that full body assessment has been done, yeah. um, instead of just saying, okay, cool, right, flexibility is fine. Um, as I mentioned before, we have a look at your lifestyle and what's your recovery like as well uh, and what you're actually capable of doing. So we then run through a strength balance assessment as well. Um, like you might even know yourself, you might do an exercise with a barbell, for example, and let's say you're doing shoulder press. Yeah. One side might come up higher than the other side, yeah. but you just think, well, if I just push a bit harder with that yeah, yeah, side, yeah. the way that I used to think about things, um, then it would just it'd just be fine. Or if you're doing a squat with a bar on your back and you're shifting from one side, if I just shift my hips to another side, yes, it's gonna enable me to, to get up, yeah. but it's not clearing what it is that I need to do. So doing this strength assessment allows to see where the imbalances are and then building a program around what the flexibility is like, what the strength's like, what your lifestyle's like, and then coming up with some type of um, like solution to, to get there. Love that. Sorry, what was your question again? Uh, oh, good. <laughs> it's very in-depth, that is. I love that. Um, so my question was, have you always been how you are now with fitness? And that would be like the element of having a clear, precise understanding of what you want to do with every single person. Like, have you always been like that? Definitely not. Um, so even though I've been in the industry quite a few years how many years have you been in it uh 11 this month 11 wow yeah, 11 this mad month. yeah <laughs> <laughs> Love that. long time man and, and yeah so that's kind of like testament to the fact that i've been able to kind of like progress and we can go through that if you've got time yeah um but i would probably say over the, like the last maybe like four years yeah where i actually started to honing on kind of like those sort of skills through business or through help with cert from certain people um, that has enabled me to, be, to, to do that. So I guess probably before meeting Charlie um, okay. and then obviously yourself in, yeah. in Chester, um, I w it was more about that £20 session or yeah. just being gassed the fact that I could get paid more than I did through my last job. Yeah. So... Um, kind of like learning on the job and just being progressive like that has enabled me to be able to be better with my time. Love that. Uh, being able to manage my, my business more efficiently. Being able to say yes when I want to say yes and, and no when, when I feel it's necessary to say no. Um, I, I don't know if that answers your question. Nah, that's, yeah. that's perfectly fine. So what I got from that and I think what everyone else is going to get from that is when you first started out, you were like, oh my God, 20 pound, yes. Versus, where did you work before, sorry? I've worked at a few places. Yeah, what was your first initial job ever? Oh, uh, when I left school, yeah. uh, I worked at Next. Next, so yeah. what were the pain, like eight pound an hour or something like that? <laughs> Not eight pound. Not even eight pound? <laughs> nah. that, was, that was like 16 years ago. Oh, 16, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. cool. So, so I was at, yeah, like five pound something an hour. So you went from getting paid five pound something an hour yeah. into fitness and you got 20 pound an hour. 
So it's like a massive jump. In well, but this is the thing. So I, it wasn't even twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> so um, was you one of the ten pound trainers? <laughs> <laughs> Yo. So I, so I didn't use. I didn't used to do our sessions. Yeah. Because of the, my lack of confidence in terms of just being like, well, if I tell somebody, well, that they need to do two sessions a week, yeah. but I don't want to tell somebody this yeah. is what it costs. Yeah. I just used to say to people like, look, just do two half an hour sessions. Yeah. And you get two, you get the same amount of time, but yeah. over over two times. So you get to see me twice, um, and it won't cost as much. Yeah. So I used to charge. I think it was like. 15 pounds maybe per per session yeah Mad. yeah 15 mm. <coughs> and how do you feel if i said i know people that are charging 15 right now for an hour i mean if that's if, if they value themselves at 15 pounds per hour then <laughs> let me do that thing you know? yeah man 15 but okay it's my days <coughs> okay, so we have understood. But, but I guess, sorry, so not, not okay. even just that though, like, we're not paying for, for time, we're paying to solve a solution. Yeah. So when somebody says to me, oh, how much you charge now? I can give them a, a rate, but they're not paying for that individual. They're not going to come to me for an hour yeah. and then say, oh, I'll see you next week. Yeah. There's other things that are involved in that as well. So Is that how you ran it before then? Very much. See you in the gym, high train session, see you next week or see you next session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, um, me and me and Charlie were laughing about it like a few months ago. Yeah. I was looking back through my documents on my laptop, and uh, one mentor said to me, "I'll oh, write down everything that you give to your clients." And I mean, it's laughable now, but yeah. it's it's not it's, it's not funny. Um, I think all I wrote down was um, a training session, one, two, three time sessions, a training program if you want it. Yeah. And I think that was pretty much that was that was on the list. Yeah. I was like, wow, as if I was doing that. Such a level of confidence as well, mm. isn't it? Like that version of you, because like I I knew you at a point where your confidence wasn't where it is now, which mm. is great to see. Like that progression is really good to see. And that's why I think we're so close. Because like you, I've been able to see the growth in you, you've been able to see the growth in me, and at both stages, we're both irrelevant. Yeah. Like, at my weaker point, you were relevant. At your weaker point, I was relevant. At your strongest point, I was relevant. At my strongest point, you're still relevant. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think that's such a, a great thing to be a part of. But I think the the element of charging £15 a session, that definitely is like a confidence thing. Because you, the person, always wants to help that client. 100%. All it means is that you probably weren't confident enough to believe in yourself to deliver, even though you're getting results. Yeah. Because like, you can go back 11 years or 10 years, you say, and you still going, you still had results then. Yeah. You can go fast forward to now and you've still got results now. Yeah. So it's not even that what you were doing was wrong then. It's just you've grown so much, which is just, it's a great thing, I think. If you're here now after 11 years, because we're in an industry where people just fall off left, right, and center. Like, and the fact that, you know, you were still able to ride the storm through the earlier stages of fitness and then through COVID and then through moving back, like, and then starting into another gym, like, you've proved that, like, you know what you're on about. Mm -hmm. You've banked up enough confidence and enough results to know that you're the guy to help people if they want to be helped. Yep. And the element of, like, money, money was never the problem. Money never got them in that position. They got themselves in that position. Yep. And you are the person to take them from that. And as long as they listen to everything that you represent and what your brand functional performance stands for, they're going to, it's like it's guaranteed results. Yeah. It literally is. Yeah, so I get that. But another question that I have for you then, like, I know you said that you're a father, you're a husband, and you own your own business as well. Like, what's it like managing all three? Because the clients that I work with, and I'm sure you're the same as well, like they tick all of those boxes as well. Maybe not their own business, but they are really busy as well. So yeah. what is it like managing all three? I think um, if you'd asked me this question yeah. five years ago, it would be a completely different question to what it is now. So as you mentioned before... Uh, so what, what, would it, what would the answer have been five years ago? I mean, I'm, the answer would have been like, I would have been struggling, yeah. like a lot. What would you have struggled with? Um, figuring out how to do more than one thing. So, 
focusing on one thing like the business, for example, yeah. I'm going to go all in. Uh, or as best as my knowledge going to go all in but then having to then take energy away from that and knowing that there's certain things that are missing off to then transition over to being um, husband or yeah. dad um, I don't know if I would have been able to manage all three I wouldn't might have maybe I wouldn't have a business I don't know yeah um, so and now it's still challenging it's still challenging yeah but because I've built that resilience of, of working with my time management yeah. and being able to kind of like have non-negotiables in place Love where that. I might potentially start at this time and finish at this time. Um, I know it's also important, yes, to make money, but it's also important to spend time with people who you care about yeah. and, and love. So having that time away from the business um, has allowed me to be able to actually manage it better because when I'm on, I'm on, and when I'm off or doing something else with the family, then I'm doing that with the family. I love that. Yeah. So, in your three areas of life now, again, your husband, uh, your your father, um, and you own a business. You don't have to say the answer to this, but uh, do you acknowledge areas that you can improve on? Hundred percent. Love that. Hundred percent. So. And the reason why I speak on, on such topic is because moving back to where you started and where you are now, to see that progression is like great. And to know that, you know, you're at this stage now and you're still willing to work even harder and you're still willing to keep pushing to help even more people. That's like, that's interesting to watch. And that's what I want me people to really understand that you can be in this field for five years and know nothing you can be in it for 11 years and go so far but still have a lot more to learn and you can be in it for 20 years what i'm basically saying is your time in if you haven't done anything with that doesn't mean anything yeah like i literally have been in gyms where trainers have been in there for 20 years and what do you have to show for that like yeah you've got 20 years experience but what are you experiencing mm. but to see to see where you're at now is a, is a great position so like what, what does fp or what does functional like how did you get fp like where is the history of that cool like, where did that come from cool um so it started off even before um i was qualified or even before i started okay. working to a gym so i wanted to be able to join the military they said I needed this qualification and what was that a qualification sorry so I just needed to I, I, I like doing sports yeah never done the gym before never been to the gym but I liked playing sports when I was younger so it might be football or basketball or swimming or athletics that sort of stuff and but I also also been the army cadets okay from what age uh, from the age of like 12 and a half 13 something like that all the way up until like I was close to 19 years nice, old nice. Uh, as a cadet enjoyed it that much and then became an instructor and did that for like okay. five years yeah now because of that kind of like background I wanted to join the army as a grenadier guard uh, I just love the fact of their discipline I love the fact that the way that they presented their self I love the fact that we was essentially would be like protecting the, the queen Maybe. outside of Buckingham Palace. So that's what I wanted to do. And that was kind of like my aim. Um, I then soon found out that I couldn't do that. I have a blood condition called sickle cell, which affects me on the extreme levels, like getting too hot and too cold, which then, then didn't enable me to be able to join. My friend who was in the RAF, um, he said, well, why don't you join the RAF? There might be a little bit more lenient yeah. in terms of medical. So I just asked. Um, I didn't mention anything about sickle cell. I just wanted to know what was available to me. Yeah. Um, I told them my background in terms of sports. They said, well, there's this uh, personal training thing you can do, which is called a PTI, it's a physical training instructor in the RAF. But you need a qualification because that would be your specific job role. Okay. Um, so I thought, okay, I'm going to go to college, did my level two, did that for a year, and then did my level three. Now, the reason why it took me a year to do both of them, or a year each, was because I'm the type of person that likes to be shown and told and practice and practice and practice. Yeah, perfection. Um, yeah, to, to a decent level of having an understanding and not just being shown once and saying, oh, I get it. Yeah. So 
I ran through that and then realized actually I enjoyed this gym work, which I'd never done before and just learning. So then when I um, qualified, I was like, well, I'm gonna just work in a gym. I'm not gonna go to the RAF thing to be told, no, I can't do that and be let down again. So I just start, that's the route that I went on to. So in college, I, they showed us about like bodybuilding splits. So you do like legs one day, back another yeah. day, shoulders another day. Um, I guess that's just one type. <laughs> and because I've never been a, like a, a big guy in terms of like muscle mass or whatever. You never tried to have it. Yeah, well, yeah. So I, I never, or even back in school, it's always like the, the, the skinny guy or whatever. So it was, again, that was probably a confidence thing. So I thought, yeah. well, I want to be able to better myself so I can help better other people. So I just started to get into moving better saw this circuit type bass based thing that this this personal training was doing with a client which was called crossfit okay and i was like that seems interesting and so i started to get into that i started doing more research on youtube and then became qualified uh became a level one uh crossfit trainer and started helping people move better uh which then led to them feeling better yeah uh, and then looking better so they worked on their performance um, and I did that for a few years. Um, and then I was coming to the point of like having to renew. At this point I'd moved to Chester in 2017 and I didn't have like a brand identity. And because I knew that I was helping people move like a certain way, like functionally, um, and I wanted people to get better at it. I was like, well, functional, performance kind of goes hand in hand just linked yeah, yeah. and then my slogan's also like like you got there yeah. reinvent the game mine's yeah. perform to transform big so i was like well it kind of just adds one thing to the next if they can perform well um then over time they're going to transform their body their movement and just the way that they feel as well so that's where which performance came about sounds uh, sounds very very big so there's a lot there really in it mm. i think it's not many people can say that man it's very much like Watch my brand be Google. But you have like a legit, I love that. So you spoke about CrossFit. Yeah. So what is it about CrossFit that you, you enjoy? What, like what, what made you think that's a bit of me that? Um, initially it was the fact of how high level the, the instructors that taught the CrossFit thing was in terms of just their attention to detail and their knowledge. Yeah. A bit like what I said about the, um, the Grendier Guards. There's something about me that that was installed into me when I was younger with my parents that like the way that you present yourself, the way that you look and the way that you act is going to is going to get you one of two ways. Either you're going to go forward or you're going to be somewhere else. <laughs> um, so I kind of just thrived off that um, and just being like, wow, imagine if I could then get to that level. So I started to kind of do that and I realized there was more to it than that. People were getting results and I enjoyed that type of training because then it wasn't just like, okay, right, I'm gonna, for me personally, it wasn't just, okay, right, I'm gonna just do squats now. I was able to get my heart rate up. I was able to perform some strength work. I was able to get stronger through body weight stuff, some gymnastic things. I've been able to mix those three up um, and it just be like, wow, I didn't realize you could spend eight minutes of work and be like, boy, that's hard. <laughs> and it wasn't just because you're sprinting hard on the yeah. treadmill, but your, lung, your heart and lungs are working as well as your muscles working, as well as your just body weight, and you get to learn like different skills and drills. So, so the, the variety of options uh, is a great thing. Definitely is a great thing. I think like when I was coached by Mitch, like one of the things that he really zoned into me was, like that attention to detail. And it, it's such a skill. Like not anybody can can coach that at all. Like many people try, but doesn't mean that they're doing it correctly. And I think when we were in Chester as well, when when you were showing me a few things, um, whether it be like overhead movements or whether it be an element of CrossFit from yourself, like it really puts a lot of things into perspective. And I think ultimately we can transfer most of these skills into day-to-day -day mm. activity or day-to-day -day life. And that's ultimately like the functionality to do that in day-to-day -day is everything, yeah. not just being functional in one movement or just being, move, being able to move in one direction, like a bench press. Like when the normal gym user, 
they probably wouldn't think that far ahead. And someone who is a works in the office and they're sitting down all day, like they really need somebody like you. Because if they've got a child at home and, you know, maybe they are overweight and they have back pain, like you literally can solve every single one of their problems if they listen to you. Mm -hmm. Like you can cancel out the doctor. You can cancel out all these other people that don't actually need to be there by actually giving them a real life understanding and audit. And when you can see everything and everything is in the same place, that to me is 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 eval like it's, you can't, you can't put a price on that. Yeah. Like you physically can't like that's not fifteen pound. <laughs> <laughs> you get me like and anyone that thinks that's fifteen pound like they have no sense like this version of you will outwork that premature version of you when you just qualified charging fifteen pound and that again is like it's it's crazy like and you touched on something else that I want to just bring into this like many people look at at you as, you know, extremely fit, extremely healthy. But you spoke about, like, something that you battled. Like, what, what was that again, sorry? Uh, sickle cell. Can you just explain that for? Of course. Um, so sickle cell, essentially, like, it's the, bl the blood. It doesn't flow around your, your uh, body as efficient as it could. Yeah. Because the actual cells are, are like, sickle shaped. So let's just say that they're, like, a half moon shape. Yeah. So to be able to get that around the body, I'm not going to be able to utilize as much oxygen as say, like someone who doesn't have sickle cell. Um, and I guess that's one of the reasons why I wasn't able to, to join the military. Um, and then if I don't look after myself, like recovery, um, and that could be not being hydrated enough or not having enough rest in between days, um, or simply just kind of like being too stressed. Yeah. I can have um, what a lot of people might call a flare up or yeah. um, a crisis. Have you had a crisis? Yeah, so I've had a, I've had a few over the years. Yeah. I had one back in 2020. So, so what happened there? Literally a month into lockdown, yeah. um, because we didn't have anywhere to go and it was quite hot outside, training on a, on a more regular basis than I was used to doing, working on my like conditioning and strength training and, and not considering how much more work I was doing than what I would have been before. Um, that along with a um, lung, what's it called now? Like a chest infection. Yeah. Um, those two hand in hand <laughs> didn't go well, yeah. which then, um, essentially kind of had not so much a blood clot but there was something going on with my left leg where I wasn't able to to move it um, so then I was in hospital for eight days with that and then kind of had to start again in terms of not necessarily how to walk yeah. but building that resilience and that capacity to being able to walk for a period of time so when I came out of hospital even just walking down the road and I was breathing hard so then I got into um working on my breath work yeah. and working on um, just recovery protocols, which a company who I work with um, and have been for the last few years called Active Life, um, they teach that sort of stuff. And that's kind of where my professional head and mindset is now um, and learning and having a better understanding. So as I mentioned about what um, what is functional performance and I yeah. spoke about holistic and the practical uh, fitness solution um, and then you mentioned about CrossFit kind of like tying those two things in together yeah. helping people with breath, breath work helping people get the, the practical fitness out of life so if for example like I'm working with my brother who's got cerebral palsy uh, which is essentially a, con a condition that um, affects like the brain and nervous system and the muscles um, and one of his goals is to be able to, at the minute he's walking with crutches, so one of his goals is to be able to not only walk without the crutches and have the confidence to be able to do that, but again, if he falls over in the street, to also have the ability and the confidence and strength to be able to get up and not feel that um, he's going to be stuck and he needs to ask for help. And then long term would then be able to run without, without them. Lovely. And he hasn't been asked that since he's eight years old, so that's... 25, 25 years. I look forward to uh, so, seeing that. I think yeah. it'll be uh, incredible. So, speak that is the fact that you've been able to put yourself 
not that you've put yourself there, but you have lived that position of being in hospital at the worst point of life, to be fair, like everything's shut, it's locked down. Like you're in a bad place, everything's gone wrong, but you're trying to fix it. Like when everything was shut for myself as well, like I was out there trying to walk one kilometer, bro, you get me? <laughs> like they're like, you get me like, bro, what's going on? You get me, but doing all sorts of stupidness. But yeah, man, this version of me now could do it easy, but that version of me, yeah. no way. And I think uh, it's big, the fact that you've been able to be in hospital and you know, your health, you've had a health scare, a real life health scare. And again, people would look at you and say, well, you work in fitness, like you're healthy. This just gives even more relatability, yeah. especially from a mindset perspective. Like, like I, I couldn't even imagine what would go through my mind. Like it's the worst point of, the, of life ever. You're in lockdown, everything's shut and I'm in hospital and I can't walk and I'm on my own. Because no, no visitors. There's yeah. no visitors at that point, innit? Mm. Where were you? Were you in Chester? Was you in Wolverhampton? Where were you? Chester. So you're in Chester and your family's way in West Midlands, isn't it? Yeah. It's crazy. Like, have you reflected back on that at any point after that, after coming out or oh, not really, we just moved on? I think only like now we're, we're talking yeah. about it, it is more of a big deal than what, yeah. what I initially thought because I, I guess, like, because it happened and it's over and done with and I've, and I've been able to move forward, haven't, haven't really thought about how hard, um, yeah, some people probably struggle with that. Yeah. So, okay, as we wrap up, this bit of our podcast um, a question that I ask everybody that comes on to here and sits in that chair right there like the version of you now like what would you tell the 16 year old version of you so when you're 16 now and you've had an out of body experience like you've come out of your 32 you are now just turn 33 For, just turn 33 yeah. bro so young you get me <laughs> <laughs> the 33 version of you has come out of this body and you've now seen the 16 version of you again like what are you going to tell young Richard like what advice have you got to give him um you can do it you can do whatever it is that you want to be able to do and ask more questions like be vulnerable in the space of asking questions to people who you believe are going to be able to direct you in the right the right path the right way um and take action don't take a step and be like let me see how comfortable i am and another step and see how comfortable i am like take two steps take a jog forward and then see where you're at and then you can then observe where you're at um yeah i think i think those are the points as i mentioned as well at the beginning uh, i'm also christian as well so actually just leaning on god more and asking god those questions um as well as like the human being like a close friend or a family member who's also been in that position where you want to be yeah, ask, pray, and um, he'll, he'll deliver. I love that. Yeah. Thanks uh, again for jumping on our podcast. Awesome. And I'm sure we'll see you again, bro.